T-Rex woke me up barking at like quarter of five. He can hear or smell the critters out back or something. I'm not sure how it happens. So I went out and looked at the beauty of pre-sunrise. Then I came back to bed and started studying weather maps and scouring Twitter. And we're gonna try and get out the there a little early today. Wakey, wakey, T-Rex. See, I'm a gentle waker upper, unlike you. How do you like to wake people up, Rex? How do you like to wake people up? <laughs> yeah, imagine that in your ear every morning. Oh man, hey Steve, good morning. You're a nice, quiet, kind of pestery, but you're quiet about it. <laughs> and there's Steve's big butt right there. 48 degrees at 637 on May the 4th be with you. <laughs> I, I saw a Star Wars at the Dennis Drive-In. What was that? 1975 or something? Jaws, Star Wars. It was a big deal. Going, getting in the back of the car with your parents and going to the drive-in. Those were the good old days, weren't they? <laughs> what a gorgeous morning. So many observations of what's happening this morning. That's an alto cumulus cloud. Technically, we are getting into warm air advection again. But before that happened, these pre-sunrise temperatures were almost frosty. The cold spot for the wind, a Long Island at West Hampton and at Otis Air Force Base. What do they call it now? I don't know. In Falmouth, both 36 degrees, while it was 58 degrees in Burlington, Vermont. This is classic. When you have the high pressure right over southeastern Massachusetts, you get some of the colder air right over Cape Cod. And would you believe me if I said this still has to do with that same thing we've been talking about all week? That 1040 high pressure system is still stalled there up west of Greenland. So a uh, weather system 2,000 miles away in the Arctic Circle is still dominating our weather here in southeastern New England. Also, you see the, the tanker just going past the hull gut. Green energy. <laughs> Golden energy, I'm sorry. <laughs> it gets confusing, doesn't it? It looks so pretty when it went by the house this morning at about 6.15. Happy trails to you. Happy voyage. Anyhow, what a gorgeous Saturday morning, but we're kind of alone here as far as New England goes, right here in southeastern New England. There are a lot of clouds uh, north and west. Uh, there's a weather map featuring our 1025 high right over eastern New England. There's three weather systems lined up with a, a front over the Ohio Valley, one west of the Mississippi Valley, and another one, a storm with snow in the mountains way out there. Uh, winter storm warnings in effect in California and Utah today. And these weather systems all coming at New England, but they're all at least initially going to weaken as they come our way, but it's not going to be a stellar weekend. Uh, I think the best weather is actually going to be right here near Boston this morning. Uh, there's a uh, demonstration at the grist mill herring run of the old school grinding of, what was it, corn to make flour? Or grinding something at the grist mill in Brewster where the herring are running. So that's a fun demonstration. I've been talking about Brewster and Bloom forever, and it's this weekend. Look at this bird just going right along the water. Cormorant. Right, Martin, Cormorant? <laughs> you guys are helping me with my birds. What kind of bird is that? <laughs> That's a man-made bird right there with a, a blue tail, and I'm sure somebody knows what that is. No, I don't have the apps to track every plane that goes by, but it is noisy around here. I wouldn't mind a wind shift from the west. It'll make us less noisy. And a wind shift from the west will also warm us up. Today and most of the weekend, we're gonna have wind uh, from the south and southeast. Uh, high pressure is offshore. Low pressure is gonna go to our west, so here's the NAM. Uh, there are the showers mostly missing us to the south and west for today. And you have the red lines. Those are the thickness lines. Remember, about 552 to 558 means temperatures are in the 70s if the sun is out and you're away from the ocean. Uh, I'd say 60s at the ocean, mostly dry today. And then here come the showers first in northern Vermont tomorrow morning as the sun comes up. And then the NAM shows most of the showers just crossing northern and western New England during the day tomorrow with the wind from the south and southeast. But I think that's a little overly optimistic. I think we're probably going to end up getting showery in southern New England also uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. And it's going to be a, a, a attempt for Mother Nature to warm us up. And then on Monday, 
We should get a win from the west, but that barometer is still pretty low, 10, 12, 10, 14. So there's going to be instability with a chance of showers scattered around here on Monday. And uh, now if we go to the bigger picture, wait, let's watch these planes fly right over Logan Airport. Last evening, I had them dual planes coming right into Logan from the west at the same time. So apparently they're able to run land on two different runways right next to each other. That was kind of exciting. T-Rex, you're doing a good job being quiet. Let's get to the 10 day forecast here. Why don't I just show you first uh, the, the sterling 10-day uh, forecast from the weather.us website. And you see the red shade there. This just means there's a large degree of uncertainty after we warm it up Monday and Tuesday in the low 70s, maybe 80 some spots. The wind is expected to come in from the east and southeast. It's not going to rain every day at that point, but on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you see the temperature, the operational number in the 50s at the bottom end of that red spectrum. That red spectrum is the ensemble range with the uh, possible high temperature anywhere between let's say in the 50s and close to 80 degrees. So that's a high degree of uncertainty as usual in our five to 10 day. Okay, now let's put the maps in motion. All right, here we go. This is our Saturday. We have a, a low going to well to the northwest of us, but uh, high pressure nosing down into the Gulf of Maine is gonna keep our flow kind of from the east and southeast. Not too many isobars here. There go the showers past us tomorrow. And then Monday, Sparrow, Monday you get uh, instability uh, it's going to be a fairly warm air mass but colder aloft so it may be in the 70s with a scattered shower and a thunderstorm monday and then this is where we kind of go off the rails a low pressure system there tuesday is kind of heading toward the southeast to our north and there's going to be another huge high pressure system in eastern canada battling up against that storm in the northern rockies that's not as strong as it was yesterday but still in the 980s with uh, snow now from california to montana on tuesday into wednesday and at that point now we have this sort of wave train going on here tuesday night early wednesday it looks like another batch of rain goes by and the lows are going to end up going to our south so that's going to keep our flow from the east and northeast and then you get a little break thursday morning and thursday night look at that a well, big batch of rain and thunderstorms trying to come through here Thursday night. If there's going to be a warm day uh, in there, it'll be about Thursday and then Friday and Saturday. Oh my goodness, another uh, series of waves of low pressure coming right along I-90 and mostly to our south with periods of heavy rain. And then let's stop it right here on Sunday morning. Oh my goodness, there's a low to the east of Cape Cod, a low to the uh, west, and there's a little trough. And you see that 540 blue circle, that 540 is cold enough for snow in our mountains next Sunday. Uh, that is just <laughs> an anomalous cold shot. And that cold front is actually going to press all the way to the south coast of uh, the United States, the Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas. And it uh, almost looks like there could be a Norlund instability trough. How huh, weird? You ever had one of those in May before? Uh, with the wind from the north across most of New England, wind from the south across Pennsylvania and Long Island. Uh, so that looks really interesting. Either way, it does not look very pretty next weekend. But remember, uh, we could go from... Today, uh, when we showed our next Saturday map, it had a storm south of us with a northeast wind today and cold and wet. Well, it ended up being that that broke off and uh, instead of having a low south of us, there's a warm front way south of us. It's actually over North Carolina. And so generally it's somewhere in the ballpark in these seven to eight day forecast. And if we go uh, put that back into motion and finish it out here Monday into next Tuesday, now we're talking about uh, way out there. Um, uh, days 9 and 10, you have the 570, that's that real warm, hot air way down into Florida. So much of the eastern United States is going to turn much cooler uh, for the second week of May. All right, so we got the weather done. T-Rex is behaving so nicely. It's so nice not to have to fight with the, the wind noise and the T-Rex noise. So yesterday, most of the day was spent upgrading our equipment. I had to get this camera uh, fixed here on my uh, iPhone. It was uh, faulty and it was still under warranty. So I got a new camera in the iPhone. And as for my editing system, my MacBook Pro, it's now four or five years old and the camera for that stopped working. So I couldn't do my zoom. So I got an upgrade there. So a little bit of uh, <laughs> yesterday. And then we went to see Joe Joyce and his band Blue Canyon uh, last night at Cohasset. So we'll We'll take you through our, our sunset here. Yesterday was very pretty, pretty chilly. You could tell it was going to be a cold morning and a little bit of Blue Canyon. And then maybe another shot of the front yard at sunrise this morning uh, where the tulips uh, were not open yet. I love how the tulips open and close diurnally. Diurnally meaning uh, open by day and closed by night. And they also close in the rain and the chill. So we'll see if how, how many hours of open tulips we have this weekend is it's going to be peak 
tulip weekend here. Uh, daffodils mostly gone I'm by, right? All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Get this shot before seven, hopefully edited before nine and coming to join you for uh, helping launch your jet stream boat, Doug. And uh, talk to you tomorrow. And often it'll be black, like it fades around all the edges. It blinks off and on. Like if we left it there for a while, it would happen. I was gonna go to Field Park. I was gonna do a lot of things after I fixed that glitch in my iPhone that was causing. What a gorgeous afternoon. I guess we lost that marine layer, huh, Phil? You know what doesn't make noise flying? Butterfly. More butterfly. You know what the world needs more? Butterfly. Come here, butterfly. Come here. Oh, thank you. You're going to be in out the door weather and more. Bye. Bye bye. That's all for today. If the wind ever shifts and comes in from the west, maybe the jet plane noise will not be constantly over my head. Plans landing toward the east means they take off toward the east. And it's so cool that two planes land next to one another at the same time. <laughs> okay, the one going over my head is easing. We've got a lot of condensation trails going on. That weather system in the middle of the nation gave us a break today, coming back slowly over the weekend. So this is really the end of the, and more for today. How many times do I say that a day? Leave you this and a time lapse and some Blue Canyon tunes. Thank you, veterans. Thank you.